machines are here. Are we going to lose our jobs? Will we ever have any privacy ever again? Fiction has long predicted a radically different world with AI, and mostly their dystopias. AI's impact used to be the realm of sci-fi, but then ChatGPT happened and everything changed. Well, ChatGPT is being heralded as a game changer. It was that ChatGPT was the artificial intelligence. ChatGPT is the sensation of the week. ChatGPT is the sensation of the week. We're waking up to the threats from AI pretty quickly. It's not just the jobs under threat, the hypercharged discrimination, teachers sounding the alarm about the threat to education. Machine-produced art threatens to completely alienate us from one another. AI may even pose an existential threat to mankind. It's clear that we have to regulate AI, but how? What should we ban? And how can we unleash its benefits in medicine and industry? In this episode of What's Left, we're going to dive into what we can do to make sure that AI helps people rather than harms us. Let's give it a go. Dear AI, how can we protect workers' rights from AI? What? Headlines on AI currently focus on dystopian concerns about existential threats and AI, hypothetical ideas about it turning on us. But AI is already hurting people. Already we see that AI reflects society's prejudices and structural inequalities. We've seen AI be racist, be homophobic. We've seen police use AI to predict crime, curtailing basic freedoms we'd have taken for granted. So what do progressives do about it? The EU has to regulate. I spoke to Alex Saliba, Vice President for Digital, about what we've done so far. We also took to the streets to ask people what they think. They have to be careful that they don't overdo it and it stays safe. Uh, you know the film AI? I just don't want that to happen. <laughs> Ça peut être utile, mais limité. Il faut avoir du recul là-dessus et pour l'instant, on en a pas. When ChatGBT revolutionized the way that we look at AI, when we started seeing the threats that AI can pose to our democracies, to our privacy, to transparency, to what is going on online, people were becoming much more aware of the need to have a piece of legislation which basically protects their rights. The large language models, foundation models, generative AI were not part of this regulation initially. So we had to modify this uh, legislation to adapt to these challenges, to um, have transparency and rules on deep fakes, on the generation of content that needs to be uh, recognized as non-human made and also to protect copyright and authors so that they are not depredated by uh, the uh, training of an AI system without their rights being respected. And we innovated the text with this because we think that this new direction of AI needs to be regulated as, as, as much as we did for the more traditional AI systems. If you would ask me what changes did you see in the discourse a year ago and today, I would say that people are much more aware of the need to regulate not only AI, but all digital technologies. First of all, protecting users, protecting our consumer rights. Secondly, protecting privacy rights and all the fundamental freedoms. Today we have two worlds, the offline world and the online ecosystem. And we are interacting heavily uh, in this online ecosystem. Therefore, we cannot have two sets of fundamental rights. We as ND try to ban as much as possible all those techniques and systems that might threaten the fundamental rights of people because facial recognition, for instance, on publicly accessible spaces means that you can be targeted, you can be identified in any moment. So it affects your uh, privacy life. You will consider twice before going to a protest, for instance, because next day you might lose your job. The problem is going to be controlling it because it's very easy to use it dishonestly in, uh, in particularly with mass data and uh, 
but that's no different from the internet and uh, I've had a problem controlling that as well, but it's been of great benefit. Uh, AI will be too. AI is scary. We can't just rely on these Silicon Valley bros to protect us. That's why the EU is doing something. Some things we just have to ban. We don't want uh, remote biometric identification in real time and uh, in most cases also in non-real time. It means the cameras to uh, uh, have surveillance on public spaces. Imagine demonstration or imagine a protest. If you are a civil servant and you uh, protest against the government, you are not going to do it if you know that uh, you can be detected, you can be identified at any certain moments. This is always the, this battle between freedom and security. We don't want emotion recognition in the workplace and in school. We don't want uh, predictive policing. It's just not fair that we uh, violate uh, the presumption of innocence and we have seen that these systems are simply not working and in the end they discriminate people, especially from certain ethnic backgrounds. We think we need to be very careful about all these issues of social control through AI. With important elections coming up in the USA and the EU, democracy itself is under threat by AI. Democracy is a fragile good. It needs to be defended by any risk of manipulation and control, and we need to preserve the freedoms of our people. Could you imagine, even in Europe, in some places, how certain authorities could use these systems to create social control against opposition, against people that are not liked, against minorities. So we need to be very, very careful. That was a lot, but it's not all bad news. AI has the power to change a lot of things for the better. The impact on medicine, on industry, is potentially mind-blowing. The AI is also creating a lot of opportunities, new job opportunities, new opportunities when it comes to education, when it comes to research, when it comes to transportation sector. Therefore, the opportunities are there. What we want to do is continuing to enhance those opportunities by creating a safe ecosystem. We should also have more AI literacy. It is useless to have AI and people will not be able to use it and, and enhance its potential. People will have to learn, uh, even though it's artificial intelligence and robots, uh, we will have to drive the robots initially, so people will have to learn artificial intelligence uh, and that will need more of artificial intelligence jobs in the market. AI for sure will be able to change our lives for the better if we manage to regulate it correctly. It's really a big power. It can really change the way we work, the way we do things, in a way that can reduce burdens, can increase our abilities, can make our time better spent. These advantages, which in general we can say are linked to reducing time loss and also increasing productivity and maybe give us more free time and have a better life. This is the EU AI Act and we've packed it full of progressive stuff. One of everyone's biggest concerns is losing their job to AI. Or we're worried about our jobs becoming worse, more precarious, as we learn to fear our AI managers. But we've made sure that in the EU, companies will have to consult with trade unions when introducing AI to the workplace. I think that we should definitely think about what our economies are actually made up in terms of the labor force and see what we want to protect. So I think it's like a really good time for us to think about what we want as societies. We added in this uh, uh, regulation a reference to the need for social dialogue in view of an agreement to allow the put into force of an AI system inside the workplace. We want this to be part of a social dialogue. Ultimately, if you open a small window, especially if you open a small window for big tech companies, for uh, companies who are thriving on our data, who are monetizing our personal data, then you will have total chaos out there. Therefore, for us, this is always a priority for safeguarding uh, user rights, for safeguarding our privacy, for safeguarding fundamental rights online, 
in each and every piece of legislation that we are negotiating, that we are moving forward here in the European Parliament. The SND put the person in the center of this piece of legislation, while EPP, of course, they're uh, supporting the business, so business as usual. And for me, they're sometimes, uh, they really do not care that much about the fundamental rights. The Socialist and Democrats group is working to make sure that AI is for the many and not for the few. That is creating opportunities for everyone, that is creating uh, a better life, a happier life for everyone and making a better society. AI is here, the digital transformation is upon us and it's up to us to build the world we want. To use AI to give power to the people and not to curtail our freedoms. AI should liberate people at work and not make employment more precarious. The EU is regulating with the EU AI Act, and we're making sure that socialists and Democrats are leading the way in writing this. And if AI does end up winning, then personally, I love AI.